The worst of the snowstorm is over, but I'm still milking it for all it's worth. Welcome to The Final Wager. I'm Keith Williams, and I still haven't shaved in several days. Still wearing very comfortable clothing, pajama pants. Not that my normal shirts aren't comfortable, but you know. Uh, last night's Jeopardy got preempted, at least the first half did, so that Bill de Blasio, our mayor, could tell us all about the things we already knew. The subway was closing, don't go on the roads, be safe, don't be an idiot. And when we came back, Christine, one of our challengers, was in the lead with 10,600, which I surmised correctly was because of a very aggressive daily double wager, 5,000 it turns out. And she still has the lead with 14,600 heading into final. Brad, our champion, just behind with 13,700, and Eric, our other challenger, in third with 7,200. I should point out that I wasn't totally lazy last night. Instead of uh, filming the video and doing my analysis, I went out and explored. Well, no one else was, which is lots of fun to feel like you're by yourself in this city. Okay, let's uh, get into this. This is going to be a much more interesting situation than it looks from the outset. Uh, we'll start with Brad. He doubles up. He's going to have 27.4. So to cover that, Christine will need to wager 12.8. Uh, if she's wrong there, she'll be left with 1,800. And that means Eric can wager up to 5,400, stay above her, and Brad can wager up to uh, 11,900. All right, look at Eric doubling up now. If he doubles up, he's going to have 14,4, so Brad, to cover that, we need to wager 700. And Christine, to guarantee a win against Eric, could wager less than 200. And if Brad goes for the 700 wager, he's rolling up 13,000. To cover that, Eric would need to wager uh, 5,800, which would put him out of contention. So if he wants to do that, he'll have to wager everything. All right, that's it for our first order. Whew. Prepared with different colors tonight. Second order, uh, look at Christine with this 200 wager. She's Rachel at 14,8. So to cover that, Brad will need to wager uh, 1100. So we'll cross that out, put 1100 here as a minimum. And if Eric goes for this 5400 amount and gets it right, he'll have 126, uh, which you'll notice is exactly 1100 less than Brad. So if uh, Brad wagers 1100 to cover this Christine wager, then he should also wager 1100 on the downside, which basically forces him to wager 1100 in that case. And uh, one of the things that is a holdover from my old tutorial is if there is a situation in which someone is forced to wager for the tie, you should reevaluate your own wagers, and we'll look at that in a second. If Brad does go for this 1100 wager, he's forced. He'd have 14.8, so that means that Christine would want to wager. 200 at a bare minimum, which means she should wager 200 exactly in this circumstance if she decides to go very small. And since Brad, again, is forced to wager 1100, Eric would catch him with 5400, so now he is forced to wager 5400. All very interesting stuff. Finally, we will look at rule number three, the old rule number three, the zero cover wager. Uh, Brad and Christine are separated by 900. That doesn't do anything here, but to cover an unsafe wager by Christine, which would be 900 so as not to fall below him, Brad would want to wager 1800. And uh, Brad and Eric are separated by 6500, so if Eric were to wager zero, Brad could guarantee that he would stay above Eric with a wager of no more than 6499. Cool stuff. So I was very disheartened, might not be the right word, but uh, unhappy about the preemption. But Eric, even though he got it wrong, wagered 5,400, which was exactly what he needed to do. That is fantastic wagering right there. Nice work, sir. Over to Brad, who I guess was a little confident in this category because he got it right and wagered everything which I don't like here because I think we can assume that Christine is going to go big. She got it right, and she did go for the lockout, winning by a dollar. 
Congratulations, Christine. The aggressive play worked out, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. And you'll notice that had everyone missed, Eric would have beaten Christine by a dollar. So maybe Christine should have wagered to withhold that dollar. I don't know. We're entering into a different dimension at this point. Good stuff. And uh, I'll be clean shaven and well-dressed Tuesday on the final wager. See you then.